All right, now introducing Freemasonry. Let's look at the structure of Freemasonry. Uh, this is a, um, a showing you now the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. There's two rites and the York Rite of Freemasonry. You see the compass and square in this chart. You see the Eye of Lucifer at the top. You see here now the three lodges, Blue Lodge. Uh, there are three entering Degre uh, degrees, enter apprentice, fellow craft, master mason, and you can split off at that point into the Scottish Rite or the York Rite. And when you follow the York Rite, let me show you some of these names of these. You have the Royal Arch Mason, so you have the Royal Arch, Order of the Red Cross. Where do we get the Red Cross from? And you know what the Red Cross is, a very charitable organization. When I tell you about the Shriners, you understand that they have Shriner hospitals. Order of the Knights of Malta. Knights of Malta, now a reference to Catholicism and papal knighthoods. And so you see the Maltese cross here. So understand that connection between Roman Catholicism and Freemasonry. Order of the Knights Templar at Commandery. Now, if you read like Dan Brown, you watch movies, this whole idea of Knights Templar being Freemasons, they try to distract you from that understanding. But here it is in plain sight. Order of the Knights Templar associated with Freemasonry. And then uh, Knights Templar it, were Gnostics, and they were the ones that were accused of worshiping this weird Baphometic god. Also, uh, rituals of trampling the cross. You notice here, too, is the cross and the crown. That is not a Christian symbol, and I just want you to become aware of that. Moving back down is the Scottish Rite, and you see how many degrees in the Scottish Rite. 33 in all, culminating into the 32nd degree, and by the 32nd degree, you can now move into either York Rite, Scottish Rite, into uh, Anom's ancient Arabic order of the nobles of the mystic shrine and this is the Shriner Freemasons and now you have your honorary 30 uh, your active 33 degrees your knight commander court honors you can see here honorary 33 degree emblems double-headed eagles 33 active 33 and you see all of those now ladies are involved as well and we'll see that in the next slide can also hear, see here the two pillars of Freemasonry, and they put this B and J there. Structure of Freemasonry, again, Scottish Rite, York Rite, and the steps at the top, meaning at the top, Order of the Knights of Malta, Red Cross, Knights Templar. You also see Co-Masonry, so you see uh, uh, women, involved in co-masonry you see the Shriners and the Daughters of the Nile and so women can be in Freemasonry and you see all of these entered apprentices in there and the allied organizations really the lower degrees are meant to be in the dark with regard to all of this and you advance in level you advance in degree and the symbols become clear and clear until while well, you once you finally get to, to the top uh, you're worshiping Lucifer, the entity, not Lucifer, the light. Okay, so uh, they are into more light. This is 1917. This is the British Grand Lodge. You can see the entry to that British Grand Lodge is the pentacle, the interior of the Grand Lodge. Grand Lodge, now you see Freemasons here in their ridiculous uh, aprons. This is a fraternal club. Here's Knights Templar playing chess, and I just threw that in there just to show you that this is how they like to uh, run society, with the pawns up front doing their dirty work, and they like to cause war and chaos and all of that type of thing. That is their game, and they use that checkerboard uh, as well. A Freemason's tracing board, uh, master's carpet. So this is how they do uh, teach their... Uh, initiates and so you can see that uh, you saw that coffin in Aleister Crowley's uh, Madame Talbot uh, uh, tribute to him you see here this is key this is a beehive and they like society to be run like that it's a representation of industry and they like uh, being the elite and everyone else being workers in this case you have the checkerboard you have three pillars here one is wisdom the other some kind of virtues 
and then you have the two main pillars of Freemasonry. In this case, it doesn't have Yakin and Boaz here. Uh, these are more Hercules pillars, uh, twin pillars, than they are Yakin and Boaz. So you'll see that it later on, just later on in this plate, and you see all of the emblems, including the star, sun, and moon, the eye of Lucifer at the top. Go Moving on, here is the Royal Arch of Freemasonry. This is uh, York Rite, and you can see now the astrological signs around this. You see um, uh, man, the beasts that you saw in uh, uh, Alistair Crowley's tarot card, which uh, reference the Bible as well. They like to reference the Bible and make you believe that this is uh, biblical, all biblical. Here's similar depictions of that royal arch, and here's that keystone in Freemasonry with the pentacle in that keystone. I forget what this acronym is, but it has to do with uh, uh, the initiate, and uh, that's a saying. Moving along, now uh, in other images of Freemasonry, they like to refer to these pillars as legs to stand on. You'll see some of that in these squares. Uh, so they're putting the square in there, and then this enlightenment using the sun there as your intellect or your enlightenment. And so they do use all these these symbols. Early in your degrees, both in the Scottish and York Rite, you be, uh, come to know what the name of God is, and this is an abomination. So they use Jah, or referring to Jehovah, Bull, which uh, refers to Baal, uh, or Baal, and then on, which is, and if you read this upside down, it's actually on, not no. So Ja Bull On is the name of God in Freemasonry, and this on refers to Osiris. And so is it an absolute abomination as a as a trinity of the name of God. So this is a, a testament to this occult uh, nature of what this is. And you can see various other uh, forms in Freemasonry or uh, tracing boards, Yakin and Boaz again, and you have all this sacred geometry stuff going on. You see the elements here referring to alchemy, uh, stars, sun and the moon, and this uh, helical hel thing. I don't know all of these symbols because I'm not a Freemason. My father was, and uh, I have interviewed or talked with, with uh, Freemasons that testify to the darkness that you have in these uh, rites. And really darkness referring to all of these mystery symbols and the mysteries uh, surrounding all of this. And so it is absolutely um, dark with regard to that. So now moving along, and you know, you see the similarities between uh, uh, things that were artifacts in used in Solomon's temple and the building of this, and but you'll see that there is a counterfeit and an opposite going on here. This is a tarot card. We You saw this earlier in the plates, but this is Boaz and Yakin referring to these this temple uh, pillars uh, in Solomon's temple, and this is uh, showing you to me this is the counterfeit. But you see the black and white symbolism, the duality going on. This is a priest priestess, uh, and you can see the reference also if you saw that Isis and Osiris, uh, but Isis having these. Uh, sun symbolism and these bull horns or crescent moon um, hybrid. So anyway, I know you might not understand that, but as we move into all these symbols, you can go over this video and understand what these symbols are. Here is a worshipful master, and the worshipful master wears the top hat, and here is the square. The gavel is also Freemasonic, and you see that gavel used in modern uh, judges uh, use that gavel. A lot of our things are Masonic that we don't understand. Now, this is key here because this is a depiction of the Freemasonic temple. You can see the two pillars here, that the two pillars are in the west. You can see now the pentagram here and, the, and that um, uh, uh, checkerboard floor, the three virtue uh, pillars of virtue. And then the east is the worshipful master, the G, the generative principle and the sun all in the east. Okay, understanding that side. Now, look here. This is the true temple, Solomon's temple. You see the two, Yakin and Boaz. Over here, they're not even named. That's why I believe they're the pillars of Hercules rather than uh, Yakin and Boaz, the two pillars in the true temple. Now, you see that the Yakin and Boaz are in the east, whereas these pillars are in the West. It's a complete reversal 
uh, in the temple. So what they show you as Yaakin and Boaz is simply a smokescreen to tell you that oh, they're worshiping the true God or what have you. So here's the porch. And of course, the Holy of Holies is sits in the west. So I just wanted to show you that complete opposite. And you're going to see in the writings even what they like to do. Complete opposites uh, against God. And uh, so I wanted to show you that. Here are emblems in Freemasonry. I think they're called jewels in Freemasonry. You see this A over here. This A has a Masonic element to it. It is the compass and the a, the center portion is a uh, shape like a square. So the compass and the square in this A portion, you'll see that uh, showing up a little bit uh, later on. I just I understand this is a lot of information. Please just bear with me. Here's the eye of Lucifer, that light emanating from that. The compass and the square. This is the Aladdin's lamp, and in, in uh, Arabian culture, the jinn is what is in the Aladdin's lamp. Jinn is a demon. And so in this case, you're entrapping a demon and having a demon uh, help you um, by wishing, uh, uh, conjuring up or invoking this demon, now wishing uh, something to uh, that you can attain through that. And this is quintessential uh, in understanding that demons help people attain earthly power and wealth and all of that stuff so yes it's a very enticing it really is like a drug if you do getting it into the occult and that's what this is all about so you'll see that uh, moving along here uh, other emblems here is the uh, balances double-headed eagles uh, I don't know exact here's a double-headed eagle over there that's the Omega sign all right so moving along Yakin and Boaz here the two pillars with the eye in between square and compass, the pentagram, and now you see the skull and bones. This is an old depiction of an initiate. The initiate now is covered, and you can see where he's initiated at, and you can see this coffin. They, the occult, have their own born-again experiment. Uh, experience. So when you see an interview with George W. Bush, uh, one of the guys interviewed him and said, uh, you know, are you a Christian? Uh, he says, well, if you mean being born again, yes, I am. So trust me, the occult have their own born again experience. experience. We'll see that a little bit later. Here's the skull and bones, and you can see these um, uh, fiery uh, things going on. And this, even this adornment, I'll show you, that has roots in Catholicism. Now here's the the uh, uh, keystone. Here's a square and compass with a G. The double cross with skull and crossbones. We'll get into that. And then the down pointing star. Now this is a proof to show you that the square represents the female aspect. I dearly love a mason because a mason's on the square. So this man who is represented as the compass with a female on the square. So a male on the square. It's a sexual connotation. That G is that union or generative principle of the union of male and female. That's why androgyny has a huge um, uh, place in, in this uh, doctrine. And again, now love the square. So the man is loving the square and she's on the square representing the square. So you can understand the female aspect of that. Are you a mason? The girls all love a mason because a mason never tells. So again, would you really be wanting to marry a mason who's not going to be uh, true to you in the relationship? So this is um, uh, the, the type of thing that they're into. And then now a mason never tells. I'm going to make her a mason so she can't tell on me. So you understand the aspect and the understanding that it is a secret society. And we'll move on.